Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I'm going to be kind of swatching and giving you my opinion and review on the new Tarte Aspen Ovard Eye and Cheek Palette. I was so excited to see that Aspen was gonna collaborate with Tarte. Aspen is so sweet. I've been following her for years. I've actually met her a couple times and she's really, really darling. I really look up to her as like a businesswoman. If you guys don't follow her, you definitely should. If you do follow her, you'll know that her Instagram feed is just amazing. Her clothing line is so cute. She's just accomplished so much at such a young age and the fact that she created a palette with Tarte is absolutely incredible so naturally I had to support her and I picked this up so that's what we're gonna kind of be playing with today but I thought that I would do a similar thing to what I did with the soft glam palette from Anastasia where I'm gonna focus on the higher end palette and every other product that I'm gonna be using is gonna be affordable and drugstore so that we can kind of keep things balanced out you know what I mean so I'm really excited to share my opinion on this with you guys here is the box that it comes in I think that this packaging is is absolutely beautiful. The reflective rose gold with the flower print on top is beautiful. Then we have the shades kind of swatched for us right here. There's fingerprints all over the back, but there's like an about page or a paragraph on the back just telling you about Aspen if you don't already know who she is. Then you open it up. I've already got fingerprints all over this. Guys, I've used this a couple times, by the way. So this is not a first impressions, but I'll definitely be sharing my review with you. Here is the actual palette. Again, we have that same rose gold packaging with the floral print. This is honestly one of the most beautiful palettes as far as packaging goes that I've ever seen. It's very beautiful. It's something that I made room for on my vanity so I can keep it on display and I can, you know, see it all the time. That's just how pretty it is. And then on the inside, this is the palette. Now there are nine eyeshadows and two cheek products. So the same reflective rose gold kind of goes throughout the palette. We have a really amazing mirror that says Aspen Ovard and Tarte over here. Here's the blush shade, the highlighter, and then the nine neutral eyeshadow palettes. Okay, so really quick, I'm gonna do some swatches here, okay? I'm not the swatch queen, but you know. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna do, no, we're gonna do, we already did, all right. So this one is Pure Soul. Then we have Made You Blush. This is the highlight over here. Can you guys even see that? The lights are a little bit reflective. Hopefully you can see, okay. Pure Soul, then the blush is beautiful. Actually, now that I see this, you can totally use this as an eyeshadow as well. I think it's really pretty. Then we have Married Life. Santorini Sands, Brilliance, which you can kind of see. Some of these blend right into my skin tone. Then we have Tea Time, Heart of Gold, High School Sweetheart, Wanderlust, Road Trip, and Endless Summer. So that's a really pretty taupey gold. So you can see how they're pretty. Some of them are shimmer, some of them are matte. There's my amateur swatch. Thank you so much. Boo. If you don't know Aspen, she's not really like a beauty guru as much as she is a lifestyle guru. She does love beauty anyway, but she kind of has this signature look that's really everyday bohemian, neutral colors, rose golds, that kind of thing. So I think this palette really reflects her as a person. And if I'm honest, when I first opened it up, I thought that it was pretty, obviously, because I am a huge fan of neutral everyday colors. But Part of me was like, uh, is this a palette that I need? Are there shades in here that really are gonna shock me and be that different than all my other neutral palettes out there? So that was my first impressions. Honestly, I was excited to see a blush and a highlight in there, but as I go through the tutorial though, I'll give you guys my opinion on what my final thoughts ended up being, despite my first impressions. So a couple other things, this palette retails for $39 and it is a Ulta exclusive palette. So it is in stores at Ulta or online at Ulta.com and on Tarte.com. I will link everything down below if you're interested in checking it out. It's supposed to have the same Amazonian clay formula as most Tarte palettes do. It smells just like my other Tarte palettes, which I absolutely love, that kind of vanilla smell. So let's just get right into the tutorial now so you guys can kind of see this palette in action. So I've already got my brows on. I use the NYX Professional Micro Brow Pencil in the shade Ash Brown to fill in my brows. We are going to do the eyes first. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define Concealer. This one is in the shade C3 and I'm just gonna put a little bit on the eyelids to cancel out veins and redness. You guys know the drill. Then I'm gonna take my Flower Beauty sponge just to pat that out so we have a nice blank canvas to start with. Then I'm gonna be going into my Flower Beauty Light Illusion Perfecting Powder. Any powder will work. You just wanna set your concealer so you have a nice powdery surface to work with which will just really help the eyeshadows blend out really nicely over a powdery surface. All right, so let's go into the Aspen Ovar 
Tarte and Tarte palette. I'm having a hard time finding a spot where the palette isn't completely reflecting so you guys can see the shades better. I'm gonna go in with this shade right here. It's a really nice ivory color called Married Life. I'm actually gonna be using like the mirror in the palette because it's so good, but I'm just gonna take Married Life and kind of create a nice base over top of the powder just so that we get even more of a nice clean surface. And I always find that if I do this, if I'm using like the same palette, a lot of times since it's the same formula as the other eyeshadows, putting a base down like this helps the other shadows to blend out better. That's just something that I've noticed personally. So I like to do that sometimes. Let's go into a transition shade. I'm gonna go into High School Sweetheart right here, which is a really pretty kind of mauve pink color. And I'm just gonna start to build this in the crease a little bit. This is actually a really gorgeous transition shade. So as always, I like to work in light layers, just kind of buffing back and forth, building up color and intensity until I get it to the color that I'm looking for. I think for today's look, we're gonna do something a little bit more glamorous. Since a lot of these shadows can be used on their own every day, like you could literally sweep any of these colors, like any of these browns across the lid for an everyday look, just pop on mascara and you'd be good to go. So I'm wanting to show you something a little bit more glamorous, which are my favorite looks to do. I love doing glam looks with neutral colors. They're flattering on everybody and they are my personal favorites. Honestly, I love how these blend out. I'm not going to be too concerned about anything going down past my eye here because as always when I'm doing any sort of glam look and starting with the eyes, I clean that area up later with a makeup wipe. So next I'm gonna hop into this shade right here called Tea Time, which is another really pretty warm brown. And we're gonna start to define the crease even more as well as the outer third of the eye. I really, really, really like this color actually. And you'll notice in this palette, she actually doesn't have too many super, super deep shades. Like she has a dark brown, but there's no black or gray. So if you're somebody who kind of steers clear of those kinds of shadows anyway, this palette might be really nice for you to have in your collection if you're kind of smoky eye usually involves kind of medium browns. Cause I know some people don't love to go too crazy on the eyeshadow colors. I of course like to play around a lot, but for some people the look I'm gonna do right here is going to be like a super special occasion look. For others, it might be something that you wear every day. It just depends. So if you are somebody who likes more toned down shades when you do smoky eyes, this palette would be really great for that. We're gonna be going into this really gorgeous golden shade right here called Heart of Gold. I'm actually going to be applying this initially with my my finger. So I'm going to take that and kind of just press it on the lid. Now this shade is much more chunky and glittery. Like there's actual pieces of glitter in this shadow, which you guys know I love a good glittery shadow. It's one of my favorites and I've been so into like deep bronze kind of smoky eyes. So this shade definitely is beautiful. I feel like with my studio lighting, it doesn't really pick up the glitter as well as like natural light does. When you're in the sunlight, it looks really, really beautiful. So I'm just kind of packing this on on the inner third mainly, like I usually like to do, and then kind of dragging the rest outward. I'm just gonna take that brush that we used for the other brown shade and kind of clean up the outer corner and crease a little bit. I don't want too much glitter up there. Next, I'm gonna take this shade right here called Road Trip. And one of my favorite things to do when creating a soft, neutral makeup look, but when I want a little more drama, I love to take a dark brown shadow and create a nice kind of winged out eyeliner. It gives you that definition, but it's not harsh at all. By the way, I did not wet the brush this time. Time, so it's a really really soft eyeliner. Sometimes I do wet the brush if I want it to be a little bit more bold. You definitely could if you wanted to, but I want it super soft. So now I'm going to take a makeup wipe and just go ahead and clean up the fallout. There was a little bit of fallout with the glittery shadow for sure. The other ones I didn't experience it as much, so just keep that in mind if you are planning to use that shade. Maybe do your eyes first. So now let's move into complexion. I actually think I'm going to be skipping primer today. You guys may have seen that I recently reviewed the Makeup Revolution or or is it just revolution? Some people in the comments were saying that it's just revolution makeup now. Makeup revolution, revolution makeup, I don't really know. But I reviewed their stick foundations. I really enjoyed it, so I'm wanting to use it again. I'm just going to be doing two stripes on the face, maybe like one on the forehead, one on the chin. Let's go ahead and blend that out with a brush first. That's how I feel like they apply best personally. This is the Sigma Curved Kabuki F83 brush. I really like this one. I love all the Sigma Kabuki brushes for foundations. 
I might add just a little bit more over the areas where I know I'm gonna need more coverage. I might need to use concealer on some of these areas as well. Let's see what this foundation can do though first. So that helped a little bit, but I am going to be needing concealer to spot conceal. Where did my other one go? I'm gonna use that same Makeup Revolution or Revolution Makeup <laughs> Concealer. Uh, for blemishes, I like to use the shade C5. So I'm gonna go ahead and dot that on the areas where I need some help. Help, I need somebody, not just anybody. I need someone, help. Okay, then I'm just going to press that into the skin with my fa- huh, I can't speak today <laughs> with my same flower beauty sponge. Okay, I love this concealer, you guys. If you haven't tried it yet and you're looking for a good, affordable concealer, you definitely should try it. However, when I tried out your recommendation of the, um, of the Ulta Full Coverage Concealer, that one is bomb, but I just feel like I need to go and get my real shade because the one I picked up was so yellow on me. So I have it in my bag ready to go return. I just haven't gone and swapped it. I hope that they have the right color for me in stores now because I would love to pick up my correct shade in that. It's a great concealer too. Now I'm gonna take that same concealer in the shade C3 for my under eyes. Gonna do a little bit under the eyes here. And we'll brighten up the center of the face as well today, why not? Down the nose and in the center of the forehead a little bit. And then just take that same sponge and just go ahead and blend it out. So now that we've blended out the concealer, I'm gonna go back into my Flower Beauty Light Illusion Powder. And on just a fluffy brush, I'm gonna take this and use it to set the complexion. So I'm using this on like the perimeters of the face. I'm gonna use something else for the under eye area, which I'm gonna set now. You guys know I love the NYX HD Finishing Powder in Banana for underneath the eyes. It does such a great job at setting the under eyes so smoothly and at brightening, which is fantastic because who doesn't love a bright under eye? So I'm just dusting this in kind of like a triangle shape under the eye. And then while we're at it, we might as well just brighten the center of the face as well, the chin, the nose, all that to bring some dimension to the face or back to the face, I guess. So let's finish up the eyes at this point. Yes, that's what I wanna do. So I'm gonna go back Back into the Tarte Aspen palette, of course. And we're gonna go into High School Sweetheart. That's the first shade we started with. No, the second shade, the transition shade. And I'm just gonna take that on a more defined brush. And we're gonna start to work this underneath the lower lash line, connecting it to the eyeshadows here and kind of being careful, but I'm also gonna wing it out there slightly just so it all, you know, connects together and looks cohesive. And then let's see how this Heart of Gold shade, the glittery shade, holds up on the lower lash line. I can't remember if I applied this to the lower lash line last time. I mean, ow, I think it got into my eye. <laughs> So what I'm gonna do is, oh my gosh, I got something in my eye. I'm just putting some setting spray on the brush with the glitter on it. That should help it from flinging up into my eye, honestly. Oh, where is that? I'm trying to press that on the lower lash line. Woo! Oh my gosh, you guys. Maybe it got stuck under my contact, you know what I mean? Well, a note to self, do not use the glitter shade on the lower lash line because it could fling up and get glitter in your eye. I'm like trying not to let my eyes water, but... Oh, now my nose is sniffly. I'm not giving up. I'm not gonna give up. <laughs> okay, well, we know we're not gonna use that, so I'm gonna go into the shade Wanderlust, which is a really pretty bronze, and I think that would be pretty on the lower lash line, so I'm gonna take that and use it to define the outer portion of the lower lash line, or like actually really close to my lash line. I think that's really pretty. And then connecting it out to that eyeshadow wing. Yeah, that adds a little touch of something special without the glitter. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and brush the brows up. Uh, I'll, I'll fill them in in a second though. So let's put mascara on. That is still my eye. Oh my gosh. I have moments where it like goes away and the moments where it's back full force. <sighs> so let's add mascara. I'm gonna use the Essence Volume Stylist 18 Hour Lash Extension Mascara. I have not been able to put this down ever since I tried it. Thank you guys for recommending Essence Mascaras. I am obsessed, so I'm going to do like two to three coats. I want my lashes to be pretty voluminous as always, but every time I do any sort of bronzy, smoked out look, I feel like lashes make such a difference. So I'm gonna really spend some time on this. I just wanna show you really 
quickly. This is why I love mascara so much. I mean, look at the difference. Mascara, mascara, mascara. I can never live without it. <laughs> so mascara is on. Let's go into bronzer. I can't put this down. This is the Essence Sun Club Matte Bronzing Powder for lighter skin. I've been just kind of into more warm bronzing powders just to kind of sweep all over the cheeks. Um, I'm not too concerned right now about like sculpting too much as much as I like to just look sun-kissed. So this has been a great go-to product for that and it is so inexpensive. It's crazy. You guys know I love my bronzers and in the past I've used the L'Oreal True Match Lumi Bronze It Bronzer, which I love, and my Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer. Both of those are slightly more cool tone than this, which is why I've been kind of reaching for this a little bit more right now than those ones. I still love those ones, but those other bronzers are more for when I want to sculpt and bronze the face. This is kind of just like, I want an all over bronze look really quick. I've been reaching for this every single day. And I'll just take that same fluffy brush actually with some of that bronzer and run it down the sides of my nose. And then I'll kind of like press on top of the nose just to kind of look like I got a little more sun there and then I always like to take whatever brush I used with the translucent powder or setting powder and just blend it over the nose contour so that it's not too harsh and I like to blend it on the cheeks as well just to make sure we are nice and blended I'm just adding a little more to like the temples of my face right here if you add bronzer here or contour it slims down the face and I also just like the look of it I like the look of being sun-kissed right there and then I like to also so take it down on the neck and that is it for bronzing let's go back into the Aspen Ovard palette and we're gonna go into that blush I've been so excited to apply this this is called made you blush I'm just gonna take a nice blush brush with this tap off the extra I'm gonna smile a little bit and just press this onto the cheeks it's such a pretty like rosy blush it's very pigmented though so that's why I like to kind of tap off the extra and layer it up you guys know I love blush though like I wear more blush than I feel like most people do just because I think it really brings life back to the face. Look how pretty that color is. It makes you look sun-kissed. In fact, I'm just gonna dab it across the nose as well. Mmm, that was a little too sun-kissed on the nose. I'm just gonna take some of that Flower Beauty powder, like a tiny bit, just to kind of soften that. I still want a little bit of sun-kissedness, but not that much. <laughs> so now let's go into the highlighter right here called Pure Soul. This is a little bit more glittery upon application than what I normally go for, but I do feel like you can really buff it into the skin and layer it up and it will melt in once you set the face. I like the tone of it. It's not my favorite highlighter in the whole world, um, but it definitely is really, really pretty. Do some down the center of the face, like the nose, cupid's bow, above the eyebrows here. And I'm gonna take that same highlighter and I'm gonna use that as my inner corner highlight. Now, as an inner corner highlight, however, it is beautiful. So I'm just gonna pop that in the inner corner like this and then take what's left on the brush and just kind of dust it under the brush. Brow bone. I feel like it's pretty intense on my nose, so I'm just gonna take that brush and dust it down. I'm also gonna maybe try to blend out the cheek highlight slightly. Um, again, it's not my most favorite highlight ever. I think it is pretty, um, but it kind of applies on me a little bit streaky, so you just have to work with it. Just make sure you blend it out, but obviously it's very, very pretty still. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my brows and kind of touch up where needed. If you're like me and you put your brows on before you do the rest of your makeup, I always like to go back and <laughs> redo them slightly if if any of it came off. So before we go any further, I'm going to set the face. This is actually the only product that I'm going to be using that is not affordable. I'm on the lookout for an affordable dupe to my setting spray process. If you haven't seen that video, I posted a video on the way that I've been setting my face. It's been amazing no matter what makeup look I do, whether it's affordable or high-end, this setting process makes my makeup last so long. So I am going to do that today. I'm gonna to be trying out some of your dupe recommendations that were left in the comments of that video. I just haven't discovered anything yet that is a drugstore dupe, but I am looking out for it for you guys because I know these products can add up quickly. So I'm just going to go ahead and set first with the So Chill Coconut Primer Water from Smashbox. I'm just lightly pressing that into the skin with my sponge, letting it dry. And then I like to top it off with the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray to really lock it in. Let that dry and also press that down again. So now I'm just gonna wipe off any makeup on the lips with my makeup wipe. And I think I wanna try out this lip color. This is from CoverGirl. It is their Melting Pout Matte Liquid Lipstick in the shade 305 Ballerina. Let's see how this looks. Ooh, 
Yes, yes, yes. So then I like to take my Rimmel Stay Matte Pressed Powder and I like to kind of go over any areas that I don't want to be too dewy. So I'm gonna put powder on the chin, around the smile lines, center of the forehead. And I sometimes like to kind of go in the eyebrows just to set those and powder it down a little bit. And to set the brows, I'm gonna use my Glossier Boy Brow. This one is in the shade Blonde. I absolutely love this stuff. I'm trying to think if I want a gloss or not. I think I do. Let's just make it all glowy and dewy. I'm gonna go into the ColourPop and Kathleen Light's Moonchild Gloss. This is literally my favorite. Oh wow, that is so pretty together. I love this. So there you have it, that is the final look. I added my blue earrings. I just feel like the pink and the blue go really well together. I still have a piece of glitter in my eye and it's making my eye like itch, which is causing my nose to run. So I all of a sudden sound like I have a cold, but I don't, it's just that piece of glitter and I hope that it comes out of my eye soon. So my final thoughts on the palette, let's be honest. Do you need this palette? No, I'm sure you have plenty of neutral warm brown shades in your collection, but would I recommend this palette? Absolutely yes. I really, really love it actually. If you're somebody like me and you just love makeup and you love collecting items or you know who Aspen is and you want to support her, I would definitely recommend picking this up. The packaging, honestly, the packaging alone is stunning. For the price, it feels so high end. I love how there's a blush and a highlight in here. Oh. I love how there's a blush and a highlight in here as well. This is definitely something that is great for travel. It's great for every day. It's great for just like the average everyday girl. You know what I mean? I feel like it's a really great palette for that. Like, do you have to have this? I don't think so, but it sure is pretty. <laughs> I love Tarte eyeshadow, so I kind of knew I was going to love this palette as far as formula goes. Definitely be careful when you're using the glittery shade not to fling glitter in your eye. Again, the highlighter is not my favorite, favorite, favorite. It's really pretty, but it's a little bit more glittery than what I personally go for. I do think that this will be flattering on a lot of people, which brings me to my next point. I feel like this palette should work on most people. Of course, I do think you can still work with them. I do think that it would still be flattering. I think this highlight is gonna be too light for deeper skin tones. It might work for medium, but as you can see, it's pretty light on me and I do have pretty fair skin, so that's something to keep in mind as well. The blush though, I do feel like it will work on pretty much everybody. It's beautiful, it's a nice rosy pink. It's super pigmented, super buildable, so I do think you could build it up if you do have a deeper skin tone. But honestly, you guys, I love it. I know it's kind of boring to some people. I know it's another neutral palette to other people, but to me, it's a collector's item. I think it's gorgeous. I love the packaging. It's something I'll travel with and it's just practical and it's just realistic. So if you're really practical and really realistic when it comes to makeup and you just like the same neutral brown colors every day, I think you're really going to love this palette. So definitely check it out at your local Ulta or again, I will link the online retail locations down below. So that is everything you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found this helpful. Let me know if you guys own this palette and what your thoughts are down below. Also, if you have the palette and you recreate this look, please tag me on Instagram. I would absolutely love to see your recreations. Also, we have exactly a week, I believe, until my 200,000 subscriber giveaway ends. So if you have not entered yet, please do so. It's so much fun. There are 200 winners. So if you guys haven't checked it out, you definitely need to. I'll link that down below as well. Subscribe if you haven't. Join the family. I would love to have you on board and join the notification squad if you haven't yet. That just means you'll be notified every time I post. So you can click on the bell after you subscribe and you'll be notified when I upload. Hopefully I can get this piece of glitter out my eye and uh, I will be seeing you in my next video. <laughs> love you. Bye.